it's possible to solve with every person individually, and you're dealing with his individual psyche to try to cure the mental aberrations, which are very mild, or I like to think are very mild, with that 80% of people, and then the 20% have more of them, and I don't know how you solve the problem with the really serious ones. That's always going to be there. All you can do, and this is the only reason why politics is important, is you can try to minimize the organizations which make it easy for them to gravitate to each other and get power. And uh, that's all you can do. Uh, other than that, I'd say the best thing to do is to get off this planet. But I don't know where the hell to go at this point. So that's a problem. So, I guess I'm here for the duration, you probably are too. So, uh, those are just some miscellaneous thoughts on, 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 on John asked me to talk about good people. Thank you very much. she was asking everybody, because it was taking like two or three minutes with everybody, interrogating them. So, you know, one of the questions she asked, do you have over $10,000? And I said, no. And uh, go back to my magazine, which is playing with the passport, playing with the computer, and all this type of thing, and more questions and so forth. And then she asked me again. And she says, do you have over $10,000? And I looked at her and I said, what did I just tell you? <laughs> you know, and of course you know what happens now. <laughs> she takes out a red pen and marks uh, an S on it, and I say, oh, Jesus, <laughs> you know, this, I know the drill. So I get my bag, and, um, uh, you know, it's, it, 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 it's, it's, it's hot in, in the customs area there, and uh, I flew into Miami from uh, Zurich, I guess, you know, from Madrid. And so here I am, going for secondary with, with the bag, <laughs> And I'm sweating. This is like a signal that these guys are supposed to pick up on. And uh, so I go to the secondary guy. And one of the guys that's in secondary before me, he's not an American, I don't think. I see the, I see the, uh, the customs guy say, show me what's in your pockets. Yes, the guy turned his pockets inside out. I said, Jesus, this is, this is going to be something. And so I put my bag up there, and I wait for the, you know, answer the 
questions he'll ask you where you're coming from, what do you do? One word answers. He says, what do you do? And I said, uh, uh, why were you in Zurich? To give a speech. So what do you do? I'm a writer and a speaker. And I'll tell you, it's most amazing. Maybe this, these guys are all told things. And he didn't open my bag. He didn't ask me any more questions. He just so it's most amazing. So maybe, you know, if you tell them you're in a position to, you know, make their lives to draw attention to them. So that's what I do. I just do what I do. I don't try to be an actor. I'm not a very good actor. I just act like myself. And I really don't give a damn. If they take me into a back room, maybe I'll miss my flight, but I'll have a new experience, just like Rick said. Uh, you know, the good news is I'll have something to talk to you about the next time. So that's my answer. I'm not looking for trouble. I just act like myself. And I'm sorry that doesn't suit him most of the time. Hey, Dad, I've got the next question. I know your personal friends with Ron Paul. Do you believe he's in Italy corrupt? Um, no. Uh, just like I don't believe that most of the founding fathers were innately corrupt, I think they had a situation people in government call a situation. And most of them were goodwill farmers and merchants, tried to do the right thing. And just small remnants of them hanging around. So I'd say uh, one out of, there's how many people in Congress are there, 500 and something? I'd say one out of 500 people with goodwill is probably statistically average. It's a bell shaped curve going both ways. Yeah. So no, I think Ron's, uh, I think he's an okay guy. Last question. Last question. Uh, this one I can't help but asking. Uh, how do you feel about what the metals markets are doing? And why are they so boring? Uh, do you think the mania two years ago, all the silver bonds went crazy on the internet? Do you think that was a little localized phenomenon? Uh, and uh, what do you see going forward? Well, look, I'm a big metals bull. I really am. Um, it's the only financial asset that's not simultaneously somebody else's liability. All these paper currencies are eventually going to reach their intrinsic value. I don't know what's going to happen to the stock market in general. I think the economy is going to be rough. I think that as a speculation, I think these mining stocks are getting to be really interesting. Now, I'm not saying it's the bottom, but I think it's approaching the bottom. Uh, so that's what I'd say, and I, I continue to buy gold and silver. I continue to buy gold and silver. But uh, you know, that's all I can say. But all over the world, uh, what's happening is it's becoming, uh, they're clamping down. Like I found out just yesterday, you all may not know this, but it's impossible, it's illegal. It can't be done for a non-Canadian or a non-Canadian resident proven by a visa in their passport to open a Canadian bank account now. You're not a Canadian. Now, and I don't mean you can be a non-American. Go in, they won't open the account for you here in Canada. So it's changing everywhere. One thing down. I hate to leave on such a high note. <laughs>